This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines. This is our first TV show of the new year, and I want to wish you a very happy and healthy 2019. We are broadcasting live from the beautiful Think Tech Hawaii TV studio in the Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. This show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, which is about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. Today's special guest is Brandy Kiana Joe. She is becoming one of the most popular, most sought after holistic life coaches in Hawaii. Brandy promotes unity and positive change by inspiring people to reflect on their natural gifts and live a purposeful life. And today, we are going beyond your purpose. Hey, Brandy, awesome having you here on Beyond the Lines. Thank you so much for having me, Rusty. I'm so grateful. You and I, uh, we know each other for a while, and we get into some really deep, juicy talks, and we'll probably do that today on the show. But I know you grew up on Guam. Can you tell me about how it was growing up on Guam? Yes, um, so born in Guam until I was nine years old, until my parents divorced and I went to Washington. Um, but when I was in Guam, I, I, I loved it there. I mean, it, it's, it's, you don't think it's so small when you're living there, when you're growing up there. And I had family all around me, and um, I was really into theater. Nice and arts. I loved, I really wanted to get into sports, but yeah. because of um, what my parents were going through, it wasn't entirely an option. So what did you like about the theater and arts? Well, you know, I actually started acting when I was three years old. Oh. So um, I got into singing, dancing, art, um, creating art, drawing, writing. I love writing. So everything about art, yeah. everything about theater, I love. Great. And then when did you come to Hawaii? I came to Hawaii when I was about 16 years old. And I actually, how I came to Hawaii is, is because my mom was going through some uh, some depress depression, okay. and I suggested for her to take a trip somewhere okay. to um, to get away, to be inspired, to enjoy life again. And she decided to come to Hawaii. And when she came to Hawaii, she found someone, she found love. And then a few years later, she said, "We're moving to Hawaii." And so <laughs> I came here, and, and that's how it happened. And you went to Kaiser. I did. How Kaiser was it High at School. Kaiser? I loved Kaiser High School. I have some of my best friends today um, from there, and there's so many wonderful memories that I have of being at Kaiser, and um, I, I love that school. I, I love the camaraderie. I love the teachers. I love the experience that I had there. And then I, I know you spent a bunch of time in Seattle as well? Absolutely, yeah. I, I, 20 years, actually. Whoa. 20 years in Seattle in 13 different cities. And I, I actually left Hawaii to go back to Seattle and I traveled around the world for a little bit and then I just came back about four or five years ago. Yeah, and the other month, you and I were at that Juliet Leiter's event, the Women Speaking Out, her Speak Love campaign, and you felt like a really deep connection with what that whole Speak Love campaign was about. Why is that? Well, first off, I just want to say big thanks for uh, Julia Leiter for putting on that wonderful event and inspiring women to speak out and, and share such vulnerable aspects of their life to inspire other women. So for me, um, there was a lot of different things that touched base for me, uh, the physical abuse, um, the uh, the vulnerability of sharing a piece of yourself to others that you, you just didn't know could, um, could take you there. Um, there's a lot of things there that, that touched me. And, um, yeah, because a lot of, like Juliet, um, you know, I had her on my show a couple months ago, yeah. and she shared you know, a lot of her really deep stories and at the event there was a lot of other women that were sharing their stories 
Do you have any stories about physical abuse? I do. You Unfortunately, do? I do. Um, uh, growing up, there was a lot of physical abuse. Um, In what way? From my mom. And, um, and, and I love her to pieces. And I think that abuse is something that is it's a response. It's a reaction that someone can, um, can provoke on others, and it's, it's something that can also be expressed un, um, unwillingly and un, unwantingly, I think. Um, and growing up, there, there was a lot of that physical abuse. What kind of injuries did you have? Well, it was more emotional scarring. It was more of the the uh, the emotional distraught of my mother wanting um, having that effect on me, and it wasn't so much of like I had a broken bone or anything like that. But I did. I mean, she she would she would beat the crap out of me for sure, and um, she would ground me for uh, reasons I think are are irrational, such as not having the dishes done. Maybe it's like one fork in the sink and not having that done by the time she gets home from work, being grounded for a, a long period of time. And then at, if, if there's anything that was out of order, um, because I would have to clean the house every single day while she was at work, especially if I missed the bus. If I accidentally missed the bus, I'd have to vacuum and clean the entire house every single day. Um, and if there was anything that was out of whack, then I would be grounded or I'd be punished physically or, or whatever. I remember prior to coming to Hawaii, I, I was in a relationship. It was kind of like my first puppy love relationship. And I really tried to be obedient. Um, I, I didn't cuss, I didn't lie, I didn't... I, I tried to be obedient as much as possible, but I really wanted to see my boyfriend before I left to come to Hawaii. And um, she was, she was, she really didn't want me to go see him. And this was like a week prior. And she chased me around the house with a bunch of knives and holy. she started beating me up and she tried choking me out and things like holy, that. And, holy. and um, yeah, so they, I, I know that she was just really frightened about me leaving her. I knew that because it was just me and her in the household, that, that's, that I was all who she had, even though she fell in love with someone. But really, when it came down to it, I was kind of like her, her rock mm. that helped her uh, through a lot of things that she was going through in life. And... Um, so that's one, one example. I mean, she would throw everything at me, everything in the garage. I mean, you name it, she threw it at me. I mean, she would, um, you know. And so that, that, wears, that wears on you. That's mental abuse as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, there was also the manipulation that intertwined with it as well because she, she was so wrapped up in fear. Um, and that could be of anything, fear of, of abandonment, fear of... Um, not being uh, presented in a certain way. There's so many different ways that she would manipulate things um, so that I would, do, I would do a certain thing, say a certain thing, or act a certain way. Did you ever experience sexual abuse from anybody? I did. You did? I did. In fact, uh, when I was five years old, that was the first time. So there's been multiple occasions that I was sexually abused by different people uh, throughout my life. And um, when I was five years old, I knew that, that this, I, I knew that it was something that wasn't right. And even though I, I asked for help, I couldn't get it. That's, that's actually the cornerstone when I realized that I needed to look after myself. Um, but at five years old, so young. Did you ever have any suicidal thoughts at that time? Yes. You five, did? Five years old was actually my first 
attempt to su to suicide. So what did you what did you do? Um, I tried to hang myself, like what I saw in the movies, and so. Um, but I mean, being so young and, and not really having the right tools, I mean, obviously I didn't succeed, but I tried several times later on in life, in my teenage years, when I was sexually abused a, a couple of times, um, when I was raped. Uh, when I became an adult, I tried as well. And um, I mean, it, it's, there's a lot of things that I think about suicide that is, it's a very interesting topic. So, Brandy, why why did you become a life coach? Well, because of all the things that I've experienced. Oh. I, I feel like everything happens for a reason. All the things that I experienced, everything that I just shared with you, was, yeah. was like training for me. That was like training for me. And it's it, it wasn't just, you know, like, oh, this bunch of crap happens to you and just move on, get a job. I realized that as I overcame all of those different things, that it was worth sharing. And in fact, it was my purpose. It's my purpose to share that, to help heal and prevent traumas like that happening in other people's lives and, and to um, help people become healthy and happier if it did happen in their life. Oh, those are like some, I mean, major, extreme experiences. I mean, yeah. whoa, I mean, that's like, Wow, very, very deep and extremely extreme. Um, and no, now I get it, why, why you became a life coach. And so many people think that you're like 21 years old and, and you're 35, right? Yes, And yes. I, now I get it because of all those major experiences that you've had and how you're able to really help people in every capacity, basically. But Brandy, I wanna know what exactly is a holistic life coach? Well, ho holistic, if we look at the term holistic, whole, it, it really means whole. So um, uh, with holistic life coaching, I look at all facets of life in order to empower someone to be the best they can be, to be healthier, to be ha happier, and to have a more meaningful life. And when I look at, when, when I say holistic, and I say whole, and I mean all facets of life, I'm looking at their diet and physical well-being, their relationships and communication, career and spirituality, and then we dive in even further. So it, it's very complex, but I try to simplify it so people can understand more about the connection that they have with them within, with others, and then the benefit of working together. And in talking with you off camera, I mean, it's not a one size fits all. I mean, you look at each individual person to really figure out a unique situation that will help them. Absolutely, absolutely. It's all customized to that, all customized, um, individualized to that person. And that means that I don't, I don't have like a, a, a standard that everybody starts on. I meet you at where you're at in life because everyone's different. Everybody has different triggers, different inspirations. There's a lot of different things that are playing into your life. And so I need to meet you where you're at. And um, we, we start from one conversation and move forward. I wanna know, Brandy, there's other life coaches. Um, what makes you different from all those other life coaches? Well, um, there are the various topics that we'll discuss, absolutely, but a really big important thing for me is that you understand how we're breaking through all these uh, obstacles. Because if you understand it, if you really, really understand it, then you'll become independent to breaking them on your own, and then you'll also help others. And so that, to me, would be the greatest gift, is to be that ripple effect. and continue to help other people with the things that you've learned. Oh yeah, no, that makes sense. Brandy, I wanna really thank you for sharing, you know, your personal, I mean, the deep stories, I mean, that you just shared earlier. But we're gonna take a quick break, and then when we come back, we're gonna continue going beyond your purpose. You are watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii with my special guest, Brandy Kiana Joe. We will be back in a quick minute. 
Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that, you know, may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Aloha. This is Winston Welch. I am your host of Out and About, where every other week, Mondays at 3, we explore a variety of topics in our city, state, nation, and world, and uh, events, organizations, the people that fuel them. It's a really interesting show. We welcome you to tune in, and we welcome your suggestions for shows. Um, you got a lot of them out there, and we have an awesome uh, studio here where we can get your ideas out as well. So I look forward to you tuning in every other week where we've got some great guests and great topics. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to come away inspired like I do. So I'll see you every other week here at 3 o'clock on Monday afternoon. Aloha. Welcome back to Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My special guest today is Brandy Kiana Joe, who is quickly becoming one of the most popular most sought after holistic life coaches here in Hawaii. And today we are going beyond your purpose. Brandy, you, in your life coaching, you do a lot of group workshops. You also do tons of one-on-ones. Can you share with me things that happen at your workshops, for example? Well, I mentioned earlier that I love art. Yeah. And so um, sometimes we'll do art therapies, we'll paint, we'll draw. Um, we'll do writing exercises because I, I love to write and I think that when you're actually using a, a paper and pen and you're doing the motion of writing, it really helps you express yourself in other ways that you wouldn't verbally. Yeah. And I think that a lot of people are artists in many ways yeah. and so it really allows them to have that opportunity to, to share and to, um, to even surprise themselves. Um, along with that, there's a lot of interaction. I love to inspire interaction. I want people to connect and, and to communicate, to, to really um, not just share information, but really find ways to connect with other people that they wouldn't normally. And Brandy, I want to know, what, what's a common situation that you see when people are coming to you for help? People are in, a, in the midst of a transition. Wow. So um, usually people come to me when they are not completely clear on what direction that they're going to take. And so I, I help them to understand what that is so that it is aligned with their endeavors, their aspirations, not outside influences. So it's not what I think is best for them as well. It's, it's really about helping them align and tune in to what is it that they really, really want? How do they really want to get it? And then creating action steps, tangible steps that allows them to get there. And Brandy, you know, you've run some very popular girlfriend events. Yeah. And I was a guest speaker at one of your events, which, which was, I loved it. And I like how at your events, it goes really deep. I mean, there's some really deep things that we discuss and really talk about and some very great inner reflection. And one, one of it that we've talked about, about relationships, and some people have to realize that certain relationships have an expiration date. Um, and some relationships last forever. But what are your thoughts about relationships and divorce and situations like that? I, well, first of all, you were a wonderful guest speaker at Girlfriends, and it was such a delight, I think, for everybody that showed up to get uh, your perspective on things. When it comes to marriage, divorce, um, I 100% believe that some relationships have an expiration date. I think that if, if two people, when we look at marriage, first of all, we have to understand what is marriage in the first place. It's an agreement between two people sharing their life together. When we look at divorce, 
we also have to look at what is a divorce. It is severing the contract of that life partnership. So when we break it down into smaller pieces, anytime we are attractive to somebody else, it's actually a reflection of what we want inside and what we want our environment to be like. If someone loses that attraction, again, it comes back to what does that person feel when that person is with the other person? So if someone wants to stay married, then you have to work on yourself. That doesn't mean that you need to be separate to work on yourself. It doesn't mean you have to have a divorce to get back together. But you really need to understand where you are in life presently. If divorce seems like the best option to, for you, I think it's going to take a lot of choices before you get to that point. But if it is, then it's really about you letting go of expectations that you may have of yourself, allowing yourself to be present and evolve with what you think is what love is and what you think that you need in life. So I would like to go deeper with that with that question because I don't again it's I, not a one size fits all. I know how deep you can go on some of these topics, but mm -hmm. <laughs> now Brandy, I know that you definitely go beyond the lines, and you yes. have been positively impacting tons and tons of people, and you're a huge promoter of my book, and I thank you so much for that. I want to know though, what what do you, what is it about the book that you like? I absolutely love your book. I love everything about the book. <laughs> I think you do such a wonderful, wonderful job in storytelling and really explaining things that's very easy to learn, very approachable to a wide age range from teens to adults to CEOs, which makes sense why it has been um, sold out multiple times on Amazon and, and so many wonderful people are picking up the book. Um, I think that you do such a wonderful job in explaining how people can be successful, how people can work together, and leaving an impression that it's much more about winning a game, it's much more about a score, it's really about your connection with people. And I think that's my favorite part of the book. It's, it's, it's the evolution of how we are connected to each other. Oh, nice. Very nice. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> well, good job to you for writing it. Well, and then, you know, you've come in contact with tons of successful people, but I want to know what your definition of success is. Mm. It's being the greatest expression of yourself. And I also think that it encompasses um, the freedom, the ability, and the inspiration to serve your community wholeheartedly. Now, passion is a huge thing for people. We want everyone to find their passion, right? And I want to know what, what's something that you are very passionate about? Life. Ah. I'm passionate about life's experiences, perspectives, our connection, uh, how we evolve. People fascinate you. Yeah, indeed. So why why do people fascinate you? I mean, you I mean, you just you have such a wide lens, and you you're so accepting of so of everyone basically. Why is that? Well, we that's how we learn. We learn from from people. We learn from experiences, and um, I think a lot of times people will. Well, people learn in many different ways. You can learn by watching TV, like this TV show. You can learn by reading a book. You can learn by traveling. But you wouldn't be able to learn anything if people weren't there, if, 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 if there wasn't anyone to have a conversation with you. I mean, you can, you can learn and, and, um, and observe things, but when you really, really get down to how you are going to unfold. Uh, I think a lot of it is through connecting with people or the disconnect with people. Yeah. Now, obviously, Brandy, you've dealt with 
extreme situations in your life. What's, what do you think has been your greatest adversity or your greatest obstacle that you have to overcome in your life? It would be becoming an entrepreneur, really? actually, um, because it, I had to learn how to charge people to help people. And that was the biggest thing for me because I've done so much nonprofit work and I've helped so many people pro bono, but I had to realize that I needed to eat and I needed to pay rent and I needed to, how I have all these ideas to help the community in so many different ways. How am I gonna support myself to do that? I have to charge, I yeah. have to make sure that I make a living and that was the hardest, hardest thing for me to do to charge yeah well I mean you can't I mean you're so great at you know being a holistic life coach and the popularity I mean it's just skyrocketing and I'm lucky that you know me <laughs> I'm lucky I know you <laughs> <laughs> now what do you see Brandy are some other challenges that people deal with when they come to you for help I'm um, having the courage to share but that's the first thing that we nip in the butt right away. I want people to understand that trust is the absolute foundation for any of this to work. And so I share everything um, as much as possible. I try to, I pace. So I go at your pace. Um, I check in with you. And um, that's the first hurdle is for people to like, you know, I'm going to share some deep stuff. Is this the right person? Is this the right person to, to say this to? Is this person going to judge me? What is, what, what is this person going to say about me? And I really like to malama. I really like to massage those kind of expectations and help them understand what expectations are, what ego is, what intention is, what is intuition. Help them to really identify their, their abilities and to help them express it so they feel strong and they feel like the world has their back. Yeah. Well, I mean, when you share your history and, you know, your experiences and you go really deep like that, I mean, it definitely opens the door for everyone else to feel like it's okay for them to do the same. And they become vulnerable as well. Um, what do you do for you when you need to center yourself? Oh, a million things. <laughs> give, me, give, me, give me one or two things. <laughs> a million things. Well, um, I, I'm always uh, reflecting. I'm always coming back to uh, what, what am I feeling? Uh, how am I defining these emotions? Is this serving me in my highest good? Is this depleting me? How is this giving me life? And when I look at these different things that's going on in my life, I try to make sure that I add lots of love, lots of love, meditation, sleep, good diet, connecting with people, uh, having time alone. But a big part, I think that a lot of people get really mixed up. A lot of people will say, I'm very spiritual. You know, I'm not feeling that, you know, maybe there's an opportunity that comes into there to their, their lane, and they say, oh, I'm not really feeling it. Well, it's not really being spiritual at all. It's actually being very judgmental. If you really want to come from a spiritual standpoint, you're going to ask yourself, what, am, what could I learn here? Because spirituality, it really has to do with growth. It has to, doing, has to do with the evolution of your soul, of, of who you are and who you'll become. And, you know, we don't always know what we'll become. Uh, it's really about the journey. So, so um, always asking myself, what am I learning here? How is this benefiting me? How can I add more love to my cup? Oh, I totally get it. And, you know, I like that, you know, I know that you're trying to have people reach their fulfillment. I'm trying to have people find their greatness and reach their fulfillment. So we're all trying to help people achieve their greatness. And... Brandy, I really appreciate you being on the show today to really share your story and, and about why you're a great holistic life coach and I want to thank you for being on Beyond thank the Lines you. today. Thank you so much. I think you do a wonderful job and you know what you're doing here, the book, 
the TV show is such a blessing to all of us. Oh, that I get thank to you, watch. Brandy. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. And I also want to thank my clothing sponsor, Iolani Incorporated. For more information, please visit rustykomori.com. And my book is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and all Costco stores in Hawaii. I hope that this show inspires you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.